Namaste. Thanks for joining me. I hope that this practice will serve you in some wonderful way today. So please come down onto your back. Set your feet hip distance width. And bring your hands to your knees. Slide your hands down until your wrists meet your hip creases. And press your thighs away from yourself. Just rooting your sitting bones down toward the floor. A little bit of an arch in the back. Then take your arms up and overhead and hold on to your elbows and just let your arms rest. Keep a little lift in the chin. As you inhale, lifting up through your belly, your chest, and as you exhale, softening your side bodies down toward the floor. Inhale and lift. Exhale and soften. Inhale and lift. Exhale and soften. Just slide your arms out into a T. Walk your feet as wide as your mat. Just a couple of windshield wipers to each side. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down, come back to center, walk your feet back to hip distance width, take your arms back up and overhead and cross the other way, so the other forearm is on top, and again, inhaling, chest lifts toward the chin, and exhale, Sternum drops towards your thighs. Inhale, lift. Exhale and release down. And come back to neutral. Take your arms back out into a T. I'm just going to work a little bit of rocking breath. So focusing movement in the lumbar spine and the belly. So your inhale, just focusing on the low belly now. Inhale, lifts the belly. Exhale, roost the belly toward the floor. Inhale, lift. Arch in the back. Exhale. Tailbone roots toward the heels. And come back to neutral. Great, so crossing your right ankle over your left knee. Spread your toes. Hug your thigh and towards yourself, eye of the needle. Three successive exhales to straighten your left leg. So take a deep inhale first. Exhale, bring the leg towards straight. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. So just do this to whatever extent works for you. Don't try to force your leg to straighten here. And then once you're there, a couple of circles. Bend the knee again. Take your arms out. Set your foot down. Drop your legs over to your left until your right foot comes to the floor. And then let your foot leave the floor but root your right thigh away from yourself. And inhale, come back to center. Uncross and go the other way. Left ankle over the right knee. Draw your right thigh in towards yourself, pressing the thigh out against the hands as the shoulders root down. Lots of activity in the left foot, spreading the toes and pressing the edge of your left foot away from you as well as your left thigh. And the three successive exhales to straighten the right leg. Inhale in. Exhale, straighten. Inhale and bend. Exhale and straighten. Inhale and bend. 
Exhale, straighten. And once you're there, just move your foot around, circling the ankles. And then bend the knee again. Arms out into T, take your legs over to your right. As soon as your left foot hits the floor, start to work the action of opening your left thigh away from yourself, spreading your left toes. And inhale back to center. Uncross your legs, roll to your side, come up and turn around, coming to table pose. Pressing into the hands, inhale, lift your crown for cow, to your seat, exhale around your back for cat. Inhale, lift the crown, lift the seat. Exhale, round. Back to neutral, set the elbows on the floor at your shoulder distance with the forearms parallel. And as you inhale, slide your heart forward, slide your gaze forward. Don't try to lift your head too high. And as you exhale, press deeply into your mat with your elbows, your forearms, each finger round your back. Be there for a couple breaths as you get a deep stretch in the upper back. And then settle back down to neutral. Walk your hands back in towards yourself, and let's find your first downward facing dog. Heart melts, moves forward, curl the toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. So feel free to shift forward, forward and back over the ball of the foot, bending the knees. Lift your right leg up behind you, keeping your left leg as square as possible. Left hip crease continues to root back. So hips are square right now, right toes looking down. And then exhale, sweep your right foot forward, come into a lunge. Just hands in line with the ankle. Find the squareness in your hips. Keep the inseam of the back leg lifted as your heart slides forward a little. Plant the hands, step to plank. So in your plank, a little bit of rounding in the upper back as you press your hands down into the floor. Lift up through the inner thighs, reach your tailbone back. Shift forward and lower down, slow motion. Child balance hands behind the back. Point the toes, tailbone, roots, shoulders reach forward and up. Reach the hands back, spread the toes. Release hands to the floor as the arm bones stay lifted. Find your way back through your plank to downward facing dog. Lift your left leg. Toes look toward the floor. Right hip crease remains rooted back. Squareness in the hips. Next exhale. Left foot forward into a lunge. Hands in line with the front ankle. So be here for a breath or two. Planting your hands, step to plank. A little bit of rounding in the upper back, a little bit of settling, and then rooting the heart forward a little bit. Hug the midline, find the strength in your belly as you shift forward just a bit. Lower down in slow motion. Hands stay alongside of the chest, toes point back, shoulders roll forward, come up. Low cobra. Ah. 
and lowering down. Now, if it's available, go ahead and reach back. See if you can grab a hold of your feet or your ankles. And then flex the feet. Press the knees down and then draw the tailbone back. Roll the shoulders forward, come on up, and press your feet back into your hands. Just a little Dhanurasana. And release. Bring your hands back down, press the table. Widen your knees, sit back in child. Elbows to the floor, hands in namaste. Drop your thumbs to the base of your neck with your forehead on the floor. And bring your forearms back to the floor. Slide your arms forward, elbows under the shoulders. Move the heart down, curl the toes under. Dolphin pose. Press your forearms down and forward. Lift the hips up. Maybe the feet walk in towards your head a little bit. Set the knees down. Come back to table pose. Find downward dog. So lift your right leg up behind you, but don't let your eyes leave your left leg. So left hip crease roots back, left knee remains steadfastly looking forward over the middle of the foot. Then the right knee bends, the right hip opens, the left leg tries not to go anywhere. Left hip roots back, and the right hip opens out of the stability in the left leg. And yep. Arms totally strong. Drop the right knee, bring it forward into a lunge. Slide your right hand to the inner edge of your right foot. Your back heel comes down and you open up into this variation of side angle stretch. The top arm can slide back behind you. Roll the shoulder open, maybe you look up. If you're feeling a little off balance, off center, ungrounded, look down. Re-extend, left arm up, bring it back to the floor, pick up your left heel, take your right arm up, twist to the right. And sitting a little more deeply in your pose. Take your top arm back behind you. Roll the shoulder back. Maybe looking up. And maybe you continue to root the right shoulder back and look down. We extend the top arm, hand to the floor. Step to plank, lower down. You can either take chaturanga or come to your belly and take cobra. Finding your way back through plank, Adhokashvanasana. Other side, lifting the left leg, the right leg is the point of focus for you. So nice and stable. The right knee looks directly forward of the middle of the foot, the right hip crease roots back. So not this, but this. Then the left knee bends and the hip opens. And not this, but this. Right? So we keep the hip crease back and then open. Open the left hip with such stability in the right leg. And the right hip. And then the left knee drops. Exhale it forward. Into your lunge. Left hand comes inside of the foot, right heel spins down. This variation of side angle. So reaching up, maybe the top arm comes back behind you, roll the shoulder back, looking up, forward, or down, whatever your choice is, but continuing to keep an openness, working the opening of the shoulders, 
not to mention the hips. Extend your top arm up, bring it to the floor, pick up your back heel, shift your weight to your right hand, and you can move it slightly forward or out to the side, but you just don't necessarily want to have it right underneath because you've got that acute angle in the wrist, so move it forward a little bit. Better on the shoulder, take your other arm up, left arm reaches up. Left arm maybe reaches back behind you, slides toward the outer hip. Left shoulder lifts and rolls back, and you either look up, or you keep the shoulder back and you look down. Depends on what kind of day you're having. So if you need groundedness, look down. And release, hand to the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. Up on the fingertips, look up at your hands, and then at the end of your exhale, see if you can lightly hop or step to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, unfold. And if it's available, maybe the arms come back behind you and you hold your elbows. Shake your head out a little bit. As you begin to bring the legs towards straight, you engage the midline, hug in. Thighs are strong. And then like you're sending a tap root down into the earth from your tailbone, the buttocks flesh looks toward the floor. And then bending your knees, take your arms out in front of you for chair pose. So sit pretty deeply in your seat, hug the midline, root your tailbone down, then bring yourself upright, but feeling that sense of zipping up through the low belly. Come on up, inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, unfold. And bend your knees, slide your hands back. You can either hop or step. Plank or chaturanga. You come through to upward dog. Or keep the thighs and the knees on the floor. Rolling the shoulders back. Cobra pose. Lowering down and coming back, downward facing to look. Lift your right leg up. Bend the knee, open the hip again. Steadfast left leg as you open. Exhale, sweep your right foot forward. Sit the back knee down. Now, if you'd like, you can bring a block onto the floor inside of your right foot and bring your elbows onto the block. So give yourself some height if you'd like. Resting on the forearms. It may be that the back knee needs to move back a little bit so you have a little bit more ability to get the hips closer to the floor. And rather than having your head just kind of drop like it's this weight with a roundness in the neck, see if you can slide your hurt forward a little bit, keeping the inseam of your right foot on the floor, your right knee hugging in. Then walk your hands in, come up onto your left hand, and see if you can reach back and take a hold of your left foot. Roll the shoulders back, press your foot back into your hand for twisted monkey. floor. Step to downward dog. Other side, lift your left leg. Bend the knee. Outer right hip crease stays rooted back. Nice and stable in the right leg as you open up through the left hip. And then exhale, bring it forward. Set it down. 
Sit the back knee down, bring your hands and forearms to the floor inside of your left leg. Now, if this is impossible to do without your knee splaying out, you want to just walk your left foot to the left, turn the foot open. So the knee and the foot are looking the same direction. So again, if there's a lot of rounding in your back, try scooting the back knee back if your hips will have it, and moving your heart slightly forward. And then coming up onto your right hand, bend your right leg, turn the other way, take a hold the foot or the ankle if you can, and roll the shoulders back while you press your foot back into the hand. So shoulders are rolling back and open. Now release, hands to the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. We're going to have a seat. So, let's wrap it All right, so let's take a seat in Varasana. If you have a block, Put the block horizontally right between your feet, knees about hip distance apart, and then have a seat on your block. Then take your strap. And folding your strap in half, take your hands wide on your strap, then the elbows, and drop the strap back behind your head. See if you can lift your heart, tip your elbows forward. And then come back to neutral. So the sides of your waistline drift back. Your starter rows down a little bit. Take your arms up and forward and bring your hands a little closer together on your strap. Take your arms up and bend your elbows again. So holding the strap. And go ahead and release your strap. Side. All right, so we're going to come to the Rasana again from the side, and then without the walk underneath yourself, hands can come to a clasp behind you and come toward rabbit pose. So lift up through the sides, roll your shoulders back. As you exhale, bring your body forward. Your chin comes a little bit in towards your knees. Roll the heads of the arm bones up, lift your hips. Bring a little weight onto your head, but use the, the top of your shins and your feet to bear some of the weight. As the arm bones stay lifted and maybe the hands lift a little bit. If you have issues in your neck, then this is a great one to avoid. And then sit back, bring yourself up to a seat. Take your hands in front of you, press your arms forward. As the arm bones back, reach the arms up. And release the arms. Great. So we're going to come back down to your back for a pose called Sleepwalker. Arms come straight up. Scoot the shoulder blades a little more underneath you. And on your exhale, we're going to take the hands overhead closer to the floor. So take an inhale. Exhale, bring your arms over. Where you feel a lot of resist resistance, just pause. And then inhale, come up. If your arms became unplugged, plug back in. Exhale, take the arms overhead again. So you can get a little bit more range of motion there. And also notice what happened in your back as you did this. You still want to have a little work in the low belly, the tailbone rooting. And then inhale, come back up. Walk the shoulder blades toward one another again underneath yourself. And then take another inhale. 
Last time, exhaling, arms come up and overhead. Thumbs are going to reach toward the floor. Yeah, so thumbs are, at this point, coming pretty close or they're touching. That was really, even for the first one, after the bit of shoulder opening we've done, this practice still was pretty challenging for the first one. I'm going to bring the arms back to the sides. Okay, so now take your block and put it between your knees, like so. Feet parallel, hip distance apart, and then we're going to lift the arms and sleepwalker and the hips in bridge. So inhale, lift the hips. Take the arms overhead. Exhale, lower the hips. Lower the arms. Inhale, hug the block, take the hips up, take the hands back. Exhale, bring the arms down, bring the hips down. Now this time, take the arms up, but with the palms turned up toward the ceiling. Back of the hands on the floor, and then walk your shoulder blade a little more in as you press into your feet. Chin stays lifted. Hugging the block. And exhale and lower down. So take the block out from between your thighs. You can either do a bridge without the block at this point, or if you've got Urbha Dhanurasana in your practice, we've opened up the shoulders, the thighs, we've done some hip opening with our lunges and twisted monkey. So we're going to set ourselves up. So hands come alongside of the ears. And then from here, I'm going to scoot head of the arm bones down in the sockets and try to hug my elbows toward the midline, pressing into my feet, lift my hips. And then I'm going to keep that lift, press into my hands and lift my head and set it back down. Readjust my hands and then heads of the arm bones slide back rather than this. They come back. Heads of the arm bones back. I'm pressing into my feet, press into my hands, lift up. Shaking my head out. Oh, yeah. And just pumping my heart through my arms a little bit. Bend your knees, tuck your chin, lower yourself down. Take your hands to your knees and slide them down your thighs. Press your thighs away from yourself. And your feet walk out a little. And then pick up your feet. Take a hold of your knees, but don't hug your knees quite tightly in yet. Press your knees out against your hands. You get a little bit of your low back curve. Circling the feet. Happy baby, draw your knees in. Take a hold of the edges of your feet, so feet are about parallel to the ceiling, and then pressing your feet up into your hands, try to draw your knees alongside of your body, moving your shoulders down. And then if it works for you, take a hold of your big toes, wrapping your middle and index fingers around your toes and take your legs out into a wide V for a nice, nice big inner thigh stretch. Even here, rooting the sitting bones down so you're not rolling around in your lumbar. And then bend your knees, bring the soles of your feet together, wrap your fingers around the edges of your feet for a supine baddha konasana. Heels coming close to the groins, knees root away from you. And then go ahead and release your feet. Take your left leg to the floor, take your right leg up, hands can clasp in a strap or, or behind your leg, or take a strap to the instep of your foot. 
Press your thigh out against your hands or be pressing your foot forward in your strap to lengthen the right side body. And I'm going to take the right leg out to the right. So again, if you've got this, you can hold the toe and open the leg out. The bottom leg hugs the midline. And bring the leg back to center. And cross it the other way. So taking your leg across your body, rolling fully onto your left hip. Try to root your right shoulder down. Now if you want to do a little cat chasing its tail, your right leg, sorry, your left leg bends, your right hand takes a hold of the foot or the ankle, and you try to parallel your left thigh bone with the edge of your mat, and then root your shoulder down. Your left hand can hold anywhere on the right leg that it can find to support it. So even while you're trying to get your right shoulder to root down, you're trying to root your right hip crease away from you. Then bend the knee, bring yourself back to center. Square your pelvis back up, take your right leg to the floor, take your left leg up. Clasping the hands, press the thigh out against your hands, shoulders root toward the floor underneath you. Squaring the hips as you press the leg out against the hands or your foot forward in strap. And again, as the leg opens, you can either hold the leg, of course you would hold the straps, or you hold your toe. Root down through your bottom leg big time. Nice tadasana leg on the right, hugging the midline. And then bring the leg back to center. Cross it over your body, so you can hold it however you like to get it over there. And try to root your left shoulder down as your right leg goes, as your left leg goes to the right. And then for cat chasing its tail, your right leg bends. Your left hand reaches down to take a hold of the foot or the ankle. Look at your body while you're there. Where's your right thigh in space? Can your right thigh bone be parallel to the edge of your mat? And then when you lay down, you root your left shoulder down. Your left sitting, your left hip crease away from you. And then bending your knee, come on back to center. Lengthen your legs out on your mat. It's time for Shavasana. Just turn the palms up, walk your shoulder blades underneath you, make sure you have a bit of a lift in your chin, feel free to throw a blanket over yourself, under your knees, if there's any discomfort or just residual stuff in your low back. Please feel free to stay here as long as you like. When you're finished, bend your knees and come to your side. My very deep gratitude to all of my teachers, seen and unseen, especially the unseen ones. And to you, thanks for joining me today. Om. Namaste.